Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Lee with another episode of Derm Path Made Easy, and today we're going to be discussing denatiaceous fungi. And included in that criteria are a diverse group of soil organisms, uh, which is the most common habitat to find these things, the soil, outdoors, you know, within wood, and sort of just, uh, you know, whenever you get a splinter or actually being outdoors and stepping on a stick or something like this, um, oftentimes you can find these denatiaceous fungi. Now, all of these organisms are going to be a variable amount of um, hyphal, and, um, hyphal and yeast forms, and they're all characterized by having pigmentation, and this pigmentation is actually a, a uh, melanin-type substance, which will also stain positively for Fontana Massan. So there are a number of different answers for this case, ranging from you know, chromomycoses and uh, phaohyphomycoses, and actually one other very interesting uh, differential being ferruginous body, which is this structure right here, and these, these are actually present within um, asbestosis, asbestos bodies. Uh, th that's what this is here. So <clears throat> let's take a quick look at what these things look like clinically. They can range from sort of subcutaneous nodules to dermal nodules. Um, and oftentimes they'll get biopsied for like cysts or some other type of firm structure. And uh, they can also become ulcerated and, and show a very proliferation of the overlying epidermis with extensive pseudoepithelium's hyperplasia, sometimes mi mimicking squamous cell carcinoma. So, you know, here's a sort of a close-up image here of theohyphomycosis. And you can see here that, uh, you know, this is a variable amount of these sort of round um, yeast-like structure. And then also, occasionally, you'll see more elongated rod-like components and then large hyphae. So this is phaohyphomycosis. So the, the, the truth of the answer is it, it depends on which area that you focus within the video. If you saw the areas that had just the, uh, just the little kind of yeast-like structures, certainly, you know, chromomycosis would be the correct diagnosis. But in this case, I did find some hypo-like structure, so I personally favored phaohyphomycosis. I'm not a mycologist, so you know the definitive diagnosis would actually be with culture. But the important thing to know is that phaohyphomycosis and chromomycosis are somewhat on a continuum. And depending on, realize that these are not actually specific organisms, but instead they are just a diverse group of organisms. Uh, I personally differentiate them um, phaohyphomycosis have hyphal structures and chromomycosis do not. So let's take a closer look on this case. And from low power, we can see that it's a <clears throat> slightly lifted nodule and you have these uh, areas of inflammation, granulomatous inflammation with these small blue cells mixed in between. These blue cells are gonna be a mixture of lymphocytes and neutrophils. So let's come to higher power and you can see that we have a bunch of giant cells. Some of the giant cells have some of this pigmented organisms in there. And here you can see these are sort of like the copper penny or medlar body or um, you know sclerotic body like structures that you would see in chromomycosis. And if that's all you looked at, that would be that would be the correct diagnosis. But if you scan around a little bit, like over here, you can see here we have more uh, elongated rod like structures. Um, with like a little branch right there and here you have this other structure and you know this is another chromomycosis like thing here's some more of this stuff there were just too many hypho like structures on this case that I, I just couldn't I couldn't get away from it and in here you can see you know you have this thing actually even looks like a little almost like a, a little sperm or something like this or a little warm but you have longer uh, rod like structures connected together and a couple of other foci here. Here we have a similar kind of thing. And now uh, one of the questions I get, now if these things were not pigmented, another entity that you would want to think about is, you know, if they're just like things that are little round bodies stuck together, you want to think about lobomycosis as well, um, if they are not pigmented. For the boards, of course, board purposes. Okay. I think that pretty much covers it for this case. Um, let's take another look at a different example here. And this example shows this what so-called theomycotic cyst-like structure, right? You've probably all read about that, and you know, it even has some cystic epithelium here. 
And if we come to higher power, you can see that um, here you have some very good hyvel-like structures, as well as uh, some of these, uh, you know, round medlar body-like structures. But if you do see any hyphal elements, remember that, you know, you want to favor fail hypomycoses. But in reality, you know, it's on a continuum. Um, here we go. Here's another picture here, another area here with a bunch of hyphal long rod-like structures. Let's take another look at a different one. This this example here, taken from Path Presenter, also shows this exuberant squamous proliferation on top with extensive pseudoepithelomous hyperplasia with microabscesses contained within some of this epithelia. And when you see microabscesses like this, you want to think about, um, you know, your halogenodermas, including like bromoderma for board, board purposes, um, and, you know, some of the infectious organisms. Also, this is a side fact, but if it's eosinophilic abscesses, remember, for board takers, Pemphigus vegetans can also show extensive pseudoethymous hyperplasia, but usually there's some acanthalysis to, to see. Okay, so this example is another uh, one. This one, I believe, is chromomycoses. Um, there's not that many organisms in this thing, but uh, I did find a few here. This is a, a nice little kind of round yeast form structure that's pigmented and i think there was another cluster up here yes there you go so you know there's no hyphal forms there are not that many organisms in this case actually actually at all and they're just these round structures that are close to each other and finally here's another example this one's an ulcerated lesion and you can see a bunch of these pigmented yeast form sort of uh, very closely uh, attached to each other. It's hard to make out any hyphal forms in this example. So, so uh, dermatiaceous fungi, chromomycoses, phaohyphomycoses. I favor phaohyphomycoses on this case. And uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. If this has helped you at all, um, please like, subscribe, and share it with somebody else that you think it would help. Until next time.